The fat controller had left Boko in charge of the branch line while Edward went to the works to be mended. Edward needed to be fit before the summer visitors came. After a week, he was growing bored. But then a newcomer arrived. She was a wooden coach, and Edward thought that there was something familiar about her. That evening, he heard a quiet, timid voice. Uh, excuse me, it said. You're Edward, aren't you? That's right, he smiled. Haven't I seen you somewhere before? Perhaps, replied the coach. There were lots of us built for the furnace railway. That's your old line, so says Thomas's driver. That's right, smiled Edward. What's your name? Victoria, said the coach. When I was too old to work, I was made into a summer house in an orchard. Now a kind gentleman with a top hat says that I could be mended and work on the railway again. That would be the fat controller, said Edward. Did he say where you would work? There'd be plenty of you to do on my line, continued Edward, hopefully. Victoria hesitated. I think the, um, fat controller knew, she said. But he didn't say. Where did you work in the old days? asked Edward. My friend Helena and I worked on a branch line to a station called Lakeside, Victoria said. There was a big lake with steamers on it. Windermere, it was called. Albert was our engine. He was old, but very gentlemanly and polite. She broke off, chuckling. <laughs> Except once, Victoria explained. It was winter, and very cold. Even the lake was beginning to freeze over, and that didn't often happen. I don't suppose you had many passengers off the steamer then, put in Edward. You'd be surprised, Victoria said. For some, it was the easiest way of getting from the town to the other side of the lake. Anyhow, on this winter's day, the snow wasn't too bad at the junction, so we were all right when we set out. As we got near the hills, the snow got thicker. We reached a place called Havenweight. Alba didn't care about a bit of snow. Silly soft stuff, he called it. <laughs> Thomas used to say that too, smiled Edward. The steamer was late that day. Ice in the water, they said, and that made us late too. Albert was hurrying, because when people got off the steamer, they had to catch other trains at our junction. Albert had been boasting about how good he was with the snow. Well, we soon got back to Havenwade, and Albert stopped with his buffers at the mouth of the tunnel. The guard's whistle sounded. Albert didn't waste any time. He set off with a tremendous blast of steam, but the steam blew an enormous lump of snow off the tunnel mouth. It poured down and landed, WOOMF, on his cab. Albert's driver quickly put on the brakes. The train stopped, and then a lot more snow came down on Helena and me. She was almost completely buried, and half of me was too. Albert couldn't move an inch. He wanted to, but he didn't dare in case he brought down some more snow. The passengers weren't heard, but it was the next morning before the men dug us out. I've never been so cold. Albert never boasted about snow again, though. I wonder why, chuckled Edward.